Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. It is Bible study time, and I look forward to diving into the word, oh, and seeing what God has to say. So we're going to talk tonight. I want to share with you about the principles for living victoriously. Let's talk about that, the principles for living victorious. Now get your Bibles, get your tablets. Get your devices, whatever it is. Get it. We're going to dive into this word together on tonight. It's Bible study night. We're going to talk about the principles for living victorious. Let's start at 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14 in the Amplified. We're going to, you know, go to the word, get into the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14. And just talking about what God has given us. And there are six that I want to talk about tonight. Okay? You got to be alert. You must be on guard. And you must be firm in faith, mature, strong, and loving. All right? Are you there? 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Be alert and on your guard. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men and be courageous. Grow in strength. Let everything you do be done in love. I just covered all six of them right there. That's where Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, you know, and he was just really correcting them mm -hmm, on, on the way their mannerisms and how they should act. And as you read the entire book of 1 Corinthians, you'll discover, for the most part, it's a rebuke for immaturity. And it's also an outline inspired by the Holy Spirit for correction. All right. You got to be alert. Got to be on guard. You got to be firm in your faith, mature, strong, and loving. Oh, I love it. Because even the best part of when you read first Corinthians in that 13th chapter on the love chapter, it was written to correct their lack of love that characterized the Corinthians. Yeah. Written to let them know uh, that, you know, uh, you got a little lax here, but Paul just encouraged them mm -hmm, to be on alert, be, be on guard, and to be firm in faith, to be mature, and to be strong and loving. Then in the final chapter, Paul begins to talk to them, chapter 16, and he's giving them what I call these principles of living victoriously. So we're going to go through all of this and move into what... Paul was sharing, and you receive it on tonight. I receive it on tonight, you know, because whenever we come through something, the effects of it, it's on us. <laughs> so we have to shake ourselves, all right? Okay. And so if you look, uh, you'll see that being alert and on guard, you'll see it over 22 times in the New Testament where God is just continually stating about being alert and being on guard. And it literally means to watch and be vigilant. That's what it literally means. And you would wonder sometimes, why is this so important? Well, we got it in the Bible. Let's go to it. First Peter 5 and 8. Turn to it with me. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, <laughs> as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan wants to swallow you up. He wants to consume you. He wants to sift you as wheat. He doesn't want you to be able to get the victory. And God is just saying, you know, you got to be alert. Oh, yeah, you got to be on guard. Because what? Satan is right there at every turn. Oh, yes. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking those that are not alert. Seeking those that are not on guard. Seeking those that are not firm in faith. Seeking those that are not moving maturely. Seeking those who are not strong and not loving. He's just looking. Satan is looking. He studied mankind. He knows our weaknesses. You know what? And he's always looking for an opportunity to destroy your life all the time. Oh, yes. And you cannot get in a Christian, uh, let's call it a spiritual stupor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where you just play in church. And usually um, when you get like that, you become easy prey for the enemy. So don't get in this spiritual stupor. Don't start playing church. Let's get serious here. Let's grow up, get mature. You got to get excited about the things of God because let me tell you, don't just go to church for the things just to have something to do. No, no, no. Meet me here. I said, let's get in the word. 
<laughs> See what the word has to say. Not just going through the motion. Oh, no. We are really enjoying our walk with God. That's what we do. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> And see, that's a wonderful thing. So you don't want to allow a spiritual stupor to come upon you, which is a spirit that'll creep into your life, creep back in after God has set you free. Over this year that we've come out of, creep back into your life and you begin to conform again to your old ways. No, mm -mm. come out of that spiritual stupor. The word has got to be exciting to you. Oh, yes, you got to you got to begin to to know that the word is going to make a difference and you begin to be passionate. Oh, yeah. About the word of God and about serving God. That's what happens when you get alert and you get on guard and you start growing up and being mature and strong. Oh, yes. Firm in your faith and love it. Oh, yes. And then let me tell you, as far as the adversary is concerned. He, he wants you to get lax because then you can't resist him in the temptations that he brings to you. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at Mark 14 and 38. Mark 14, 38. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is willing, but the flesh is weak. When you don't build up your spirit man with the word of God, then the flesh is going to overrule everything that the spirit would want to do. Why? Because you have not nourished the spirit. You have not fed your spirit man. You have to feed it. It's just like food that you eat every day. If you don't eat food, okay, if you don't eat, you, you're, you're, you're going to get weak. Your flesh will get weak when you don't eat food. Yeah. And it's the same way. If you don't feed the flesh off of the things of the world in the spirit realm, then the flesh will get weak. When you begin to feed your spirit on the word of God and build that spirit man up, it enables you to resist temptation. Why? Because you're alert. The word of God makes you focus, opens your eyes up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're on guard. Oh, yes. You're always, you got your spiritual antennas up. Oh, it's a good thing. So you come, don't get in that spiritual stupor. Don't you fall to the temptations that God had pulled you all out of that you fall back in. You know, Samson is a good example of this. Yes, he is. He began to think that he was invincible. And then all of a sudden, who came along? Delilah. <laughs> she crept into his life. <laughs> That's what happens to a lot of Christians today. The enemy will creep in. Oh, yeah. Oh, because you're not alert. And because you're not on guard. See, it'll work its way right back into your life. Don't let it happen. Now, another area where the Bible admonishes us to be alert and on guard uh, is in regard to false teaching. Be careful. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. You got to be careful. You know, the enemy will twist the truth. He'll take some of the truth and then, you know, get your ear on that. Oh, the devil is a lie. Any teaching that doesn't line up with the basic redemptive truth in the word of God, you watch out for that. Don't you fall for it. You watch out for that. Amen. You don't have to know. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to know when something's not right. When you begin to, you know, read your Bible, just start reading your Bible. I'm telling you, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. You may not be able to quote the scripture. You may not even be able to find where it is in the Bible, but you can say, I know it's there. It's there. Uh -uh. It just doesn't sit right with me. No. Yeah. And you know that it's designed by Satan to get you off your course, to rob you of God's best in your life. That's what he wants to do. Oh, he wants to take all the goodness that God has for you. He don't want you to get it. It's an example of this in the book of Galatians. Let's turn there right now. Galatians 3 and 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Huh? Ah, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Don't fall for the enemy's tricks. You know, Satan knows just how he can steal the truth out of your heart. Oh, yeah. He knows how he can steal the truth. Because if he gets the truth out of your heart, he steals your freedom. Mm, because it is the truth that sets you free. 
Don't let him have it. No. He that's a son sets free is free indeed. So you, you hold on to his word. That's why we take time going through the word. All right, the next principle that I mentioned in the beginning in the lesson was standing firm in faith. Jude 3. Let's go there. Jude 3. Beloved, I exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Let's fight for it. Fight that good fight of faith. You got to fight for it. You got to recognize. You got to know. It's not about a person. Uh -uh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in how places and the rulers of the darkness of this world. You got to realize this. Oh, yes, you got to contend for the faith. You got to know you can't fight the devil with your natural armor. You got to put on the armor of God. First Timothy 1 and 19. Holding faith, which some having put away, have made shipwreck. Let me tell you, you can't, you cannot handle Satan in a natural realm. He'll always, you know, you just make a mess. A shipwreck, it says here. Oh my goodness, a shipwreck dashed up against every stone there is, every problem that comes your way. Wow, just hit it. But he's saying right here, don't you let go of your faith. You stand firm in your faith. Because without faith, you cannot please God. That's what the Bible says. Without faith, there's no way that you're going to overwhelm the adversary. Mm -mm. There's just no way. You, you, you've got to begin to put on the arm of God. Ephesians 6. And as you begin to put on the arm of God, your helmet of salvation. Yeah, you got to begin to get that word and start thinking the way God wants you to think. Oh, let me tell you to make a dis difference. Because without faith, you cannot overcome the adversary. First Peter 5 and 9 says, whom resists steadfast in the faith. See, so you got to stand firm in faith. It'll be all kind of ways that Satan will try to get you to step back from your faith in God. But the devil is a lie. Because without faith, you will never inherit the promises. That's in the Bible too. Hebrews 6 and 12. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And then Hebrews 10 and 35. I, oh, okay, I'm slow up. I know, I know. Oh, I tell you, just down in my belly. Oh, yes. Hebrew 10, 35 in the Amplified. Okay? All right. Do not, therefore, fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Oh, my goodness. I cannot simply say enough about standing firm in faith. Oh, it is your faith. Oh, that will cause you to benefit. It is your faith that will cause you to inherit all the promises of God. And without it, living victorious is only a dream. It's just a dream. But with it, your dream will become a reality. Oh, yes, it will. First John 5 and 4. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Oh, 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 that's good. Let's go to the next principle. Oh, glory to God. Be mature, or as Paul said, act like men. Now, that has no gender there. He's just talking about, you know, be mature, uh, grow up. The Corinthians were just the opposite. They were acting like babies. They were spoiling and quarreling over every little thing. That's why Paul wrote to them and said, he said, you know what, brethren, be not children in understanding. And understanding be me. And that's 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. I told you, I'm going to delve into it tonight. You're just going to have to write it down because I tell you, whew, this is good to me. Then there's an NAS translation that says, do not be children in your thinking. In your thinking, be mature. In other words, grow up. <laughs> in chapter 3, Paul said that they were so immature that he couldn't even Feed them the meat of God's word. Had to give them milk. Yeah. yeah. Immaturity. Immaturity. Immaturity is robbing a lot of believers in the body of Christ today. Because the things that God had for you, you can't even begin to walk in the knowledge of it. Because let me tell you, when you get into a lot of squabbles and, and quarrels and, you know, uh, immature acts, uh, it takes up mind space. It takes up your focus. It keeps you from being... Uh, Firm in your faith. 
Let's just put it just like that. You start backbiting, you feel with strife and disharmony and unforgiveness. Can't do it. Mm -mm. Okay, these are all signs of immaturity. Yeah, backbiting, strife, unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, disharmony. Mm -hmm. They run rampantly in the body of Christ, even as I speak right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And how anyone could possibly think that these things are going to lead to a victorious life? Mm -hmm. That lifestyle won't work. It's far beyond me. Glory to God. My understanding of it. Okay, let's go next. He said, be strong. This usually refers to deep spiritual strength. Yeah, it does. Uh, Colossians 1 and 11. Strengthen with all might. Uh, that's that here, almighty God. <laughs> Strengthen with all might. Ephesians 3 and 16. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Ooh, you get strong on the inside. I tell you, I tell you, it won't matter what the enemy does. Ooh, glory to God. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. <laughs> Ooh, you're talking about being spiritually strong. Mm, that's what happened. Oh, why? Colossians 3, 16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Oh, that's how it happens. Oh, glory to God. When you're spiritually strong, then you're not easily deceived. You won't be devoured. Spiritually strong. Uh, the word of God. And remember, if Satan can't deceive you, he can't. Hear me. He cannot defeat you. Woo! That's glory there. And finally, love it. I tell you, that's a whole message by itself. So I'm just going to say, walk in love. When you walk in love, it balances all the other principles. Walking in love, being on guard. Walking in love, standing firm in faith. Walking in love, oh yes, uh, being mature. Walking in love, being alert. Walking in love, being strong. Walking in love, even being loving. <laughs> walk in love. It balances out all the other principles principles of God. Because without love, none of the others will benefit you. Sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. And so Paul said, what did he say? Love never fails. <laughs> Come on, give God glory. Give God some praise. Give God glory right now. Glory to God. Give him the praise. Ooh, hallelujah. The principles of living a victorious life. Be alert. Be on guard. Be mature. Be strong. Stand firm in faith and be loving. <laughs> oh, give God glory. Give him the praise right now. Hallelujah to his name. Well, it's time to give. It's time to release unto God that that he has blessed us with that we release unto him in obedience. Do it right now. The way that you can do it is on the bottom of the screen. All the platforms are there. All you got to do is obey. <laughs> and when we obey, oh my God, everything that's trying to keep back what God's got for us, we're letting the devil know we are not in a spiritual stupor. We are alert. We are on guard. We are firm in faith, strong, mature. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And loving. God is so good. He's so worthy to be praised. Oh, well, I thank God for you. I know you've obeyed God. We've had a time in Bible study tonight. God bless you on tonight. And remember, you've got the principles for living victoriously in this life. God bless you. Mm -hmm.